Welcome back. This is the last video of chapter 4 in which we are going to give a simple characterization of the open subsets of R. I hope that you found an example of a set having infinitely many components. I will give it to you. The complement of Z of the integers. So the set of all real numbers which are not integers. What are the connected components of this set? The connected components are all open intervals of the form n, n plus 1. Okay? So this is an example of a set having infinitely many components. Are, and all the components are open. And surprisingly, this is the most general form of an open subset of R. Any open subset of R. Is, can be written as a disjoint union of a countable collection of open intervals, okay. like R without Z or R without N. So, but let's, to prove this, let us establish a result that I mentioned in the previous video, and I ask you to think of it. If O is an open subset of R, then the connected components of O are also open. This is very simple, actually, and it, the result is true for any open subset of R N, not just R. Okay, because the same argument works. Okay, so let's see capital C denote a connected component of this open set O. And consider an element X and C. Now, since O is open, it is a neighborhood of X. Therefore, by definition, there exists a ball, which is an interval, actually, uh, of the form, let us say, X minus epsilon, X plus epsilon, or X minus R, X plus R. So denote this interval by V. So there is an interval V containing X and contained in O. Actually, this is O, not Q. Please replace that. Now, as we know, an interval is connected. So V is connected and contains X. But C is the biggest connected uh, subset of O containing X. Therefore, V is contained in C. And this means that C is a neighborhood of X. Since X was arbitrary, this means that C is a neighborhood of all its points, and therefore it's open. Okay. <clears throat> so the same reasoning works actually in Rn, but instead of an interval, we have a ball. Okay. Yeah. So the last result is the one I mentioned. Every open subset O of the real line is a countable union, a disjoint countable union of open intervals like R without Z. Okay, now we know that any space has connected components, so let I sub lambda, lambda in L, denote the collection of connected components of O. Of course, we know that each I lambda is an interval because it's connected. <clears throat> and according to the previous lemma, it's also open, so each I lambda is an open interval. Now, every open interval contains a rational number. So for each lambda in R, there is a rational number that I can call uh, A lambda, if you like, or Q lambda. So there is, so this defines actually what? A function from the index set lambda into the, into the set of rational numbers Q. Okay, we have a function uh, F from capital L, the index set, into Q, that to each lambda associates this rational number, okay? And this function is injective, it's one-to-one. -one. Why? Because the connected components are disjoint. So if f of lambda equal to f of lambda prime, or if you like, Q lambda equal Q lambda prime, then necessarily lambda equal lambda prime. Okay. Therefore, we have an injection now between the index set L and Q. And this means that L is countable, okay? And that's it. So, but I know that O is a, a union of these connected components. But the point in the proof is that to prove that this union is a countable union, okay? So we can write to O as union of open intervals of the form small a n, small b n, if you like. So like R without Z. And this is the most general form of an open subset of R. So we have a complete characterization uh, of open subsets of R. So this concludes this video and chapter four. Thank you for your attention.
and see you next time.